Madam Ambassador, Rector, Distinguished Guest in Tokyo and Trondheim, welcome to the doctoral award ceremony in honor of Professor Toru Ukabe. We have just seen pictures from Trondheim and from Antanu's main building where the doctoral award ceremony normally takes place. Under normal circumstances, the celebration of our new honor doctor would have taken place in front of audience of 200 new PhD candidates, deans, and pro-rectors for research, education, and innovation. The ceremony today is extraordinary, with only Rector Anne Borg and Professor Gail Martin Horvoy present. No, we are waiting to be introduced to the guests and the staff present at the embassy in Tokyo. Please, Ambassador Nihamar. Dear Professor Okabe, Mrs. Okabe, dear Rector Borg, dear members of the academic communities in Norway and Japan, it is a great pleasure for me to wish you all welcome to the Aurora Hall at the Norwegian Embassy in Tokyo. My name is Inga Nihamar. I am Norway's ambassador to Japan, and I am very happy to see our embassy serving quite <clears throat> seamlessly today as part of the Norwegian University of Science and Technology in Trondheim, Norway. So let me introduce to you in Trondheim those who take part here on the Japanese side. First of all, we're very happy to receive here at the embassy, Professor Okabe Toru from the University of Tokyo, where he's vice president and professor as well as director of the Integrated Research Center for Sustainable Energy and Materials. Professor Okabe is <clears throat> known to us here at the embassy as a good friend of Norway, and also a very good friend of very many visiting Norwegians to Japan. To us here at the embassy, it is quite exciting to welcome one of the world's foremost researchers on groundbreaking sustainable processes for the smelting use and recycling of rare metals, so-called urban mining, developing essential knowledge for our technological future. We are also very pleased that Mrs. Okaba Hiromi could attend today. In this room, we also have Professor Shu Hongmin of Tohoku University at the Department of Metallurgy, and also member and research fellow uh, in Okaba's lab. He is a researcher in uh, molten salt electrochemistry, as well as high temperature chemical processes and fusing materiality. Professor Mitsuhata Minora uh, has joined us from the University of Kyoto, where he is professor at the Department of Chemical Science and Engineering. In the field of inorganic chemistry, he does material research on fuel cells and various aspects of nanotechnology. I'm also happy to welcome Professor Mits, uh, Matsuyama Momoyo, the Deputy Director of Public Relations at the Institute of Industrial Science at the University of Tokyo. And Dr. <coughs> Dr. Sushi Takanori, where, uh, who is Research Assistant at Professor Okabe's lab and does research on liquid metal batteries. Online, I'm happy to welcome Professor Ito Yasuhiko in Kyoto, who for decades has been a key person in the scientific cooperation between Norway and Japan, and the founder of the Kyoto International Forum for Environment and Energy. We are honored that you could attend today. From Kyoto University, we also have Professor Uda Tesuya, who also played an important role in establishing the KIFEE, as well as Professor Nohira Toshiyuki. From the embassy, besides myself, we have Mr. Per Arvefreyen, head of the uh, Trade and Technology Office at the embassy, Ms. Marianne Sternberg, Science and Technology Counselor, 
I'm Mr. Otto Malmgren, Councillor for Press, Information and Cultural Affairs, as well as Business Promotion. As you understand, a very select group of people here in Tokyo and Kyoto also, all happy to be able to attend the NTNU ceremony. And with that, it is my great pleasure to give the floor to Rector Anne Borg. Dear Ambassador Nihama, Professor Okaba, and everyone present in Tokyo, I'm most grateful that the Norwegian Embassy could host this doctoral awards ceremony on behalf of NTNU. Even if we see light at the end of the tunnel, it will most likely take a good while before international travel is permissible. So, it's slowly that we, meanwhile, can meet online as we are doing today. Here at NTNU, we are gathered in the Academic Council Hall. The portraits you see at back in the, on the wall are our past rectors. Under the portraits, the benches should have been filled with researchers wanting to celebrate our new honorary doctor. Three days ago, however, the Norwegian government decided to advise against all social and professional gatherings. Instead of meeting physically, we thus had to invite our researchers to follow the ceremony online today. As you can see from the list of participants, Professor Okaba has made many academic friendships across disciplines and institutions here in Trondheim. The researchers come from Department of Material Science and Engineering, Department of Physics, Department of Biotechnology and Food Sciences, and the Department of Energy and Process Engineering, as well as from our sister institution, Sintef Industry. The many different disciplines which they present reflect the wide academic footprint of Professor Okabe. I'm sure we will learn more about that later today. Well, enough from Trondheim. How are you in Tokyo? In Tokyo, we are just fine. We are this week enjoying the annual uh, cherry blossoming, uh, which uh, gives us uh, great hope for the future as always. And it's uh, quite a delight to see. But uh, to turn to what goes on inside this room, it is now uh, my turn to say a few words um, to uh, Dr. Okabe and uh, about the research cooperation between Norway and Japan. First of all, Rector Berg, the NTNU's position as an academic partner in Japan is in fact a point of pride for the embassy. The Kyoto International Forum for Environment and Energy is a particularly salient point of reference here. In addition to the many personal relationships between the NTNU scientists and colleagues in Japan. In normal times, we also have more than 500 Norwegian students visiting the embassy every year, and the majority of them actually come from the NTNU. Norway and Japan have enjoyed an active dialogue and cooperation on science, technology, and innovation over several decades. The Bilateral Science and Technology Cooperation Agreement from 2003 has contributed greatly to deepen our exchanges. Science and technology cooperation has become one of the most important foundations for the general bilateral relationship of our two countries. And in fact, the topics included in the bilateral science and technology agreement are also well represented in our trade and business relationship. Uh, I'll just mention briefly what uh, areas this agreement um, 
encompasses its energy and the environment, space and polar research, marine research, nanotechnology and new materials, and healthcare and welfare technology. Japan is included as a priority country in the Norwegian government's panorama strategy for international cooperation in research and education. In fact, the last big science and technology event that we saw here in Tokyo before the pandemic was when our Minister of Research and Higher Education at the time, Ms. Iselin Nuber, visited Japan in November 2019. The minister was accompanied by a large high-level delegation of university rectors, including you, Dr. Borg, and other leaders in the trade and technology field. The visit demonstrated the breadth of our scientific cooperation in a very good way, as well as pointing out how science is a conductor for our bilateral relations and business cooperation. Indeed, Team Norway Japan, as we fondly call it, that is the Research Council of Norway, Innovation Norway, the Norwegian Agency for International Cooperation in Higher Education, the Norwegian Seafood Council, the Norwegian Chamber of Commerce Japan, and the Embassy, works on the premise of a knowledge triangle of research, business, and education to achieve knowledge-based innovation and business cooperation between Norway and Japan. We firmly believe that the world's pressing concerns today, as spelled out in the UN Sustainable Development Goals, can only be solved by cooperation across countries and continents to develop a knowledge-based society. In this, we are also inspired by Japan's Society 5.0 concept and moonshot programs, which are highly ambitious and point towards more sustainable modes of organizing our societies based on innovative science-based solutions. The embassy's contribution in all this lies in promoting useful networks and hosting events in a broad range of thematic areas, energy, health, materials, marine sciences, maritime, Arctic, space, in the natural science field, that is, but also gender equality, diversity, design and art, welfare models, and many more in the social science and humanities areas. The Norwegian Embassy in Tokyo will continue to support Japanese and Norwegian partners in research, higher education, and business. We have dedicated staff here at the Embassy, and we are proud of our team Norway, making the knowledge triangle an effective tool for Japan-Norway collaboration also in the future. Thank you for your attention. The floor is yours, Dr. Borg. Wonderful to see you all in Tokyo. I am particularly happy to see so many Japanese friends of NTNU that you were able to come to the embassy and to participate online. We have a long history together. The scientific collaboration between NTNU and Japan started with individual professor to professor contacts more than 40 years ago, primarily within the fields of technology and architecture. The main Collaborating institutions at the time were University of Tokyo and Kyoto University. In 1995, NTNU established the Japan program with the ambition to extend our long-term collaboration in technology to include Japanese culture, language, and political science. The formal academic collaboration had its kickoff with the Japan Week in Trondheim in 2002. NTNU hosted scientific seminars within the fields of energy and materials technology. But the Japan Week also focused 
on cultural exchange in the form of art performances, gastronomical gatherings, and exhibitions. Ambassador Nihamar spoke about the national research collaboration between Norway and Japan. For NTNU, the Kyoto International Forum for Environment and Energy, KIFI as we call it, has been our most important arena for scientific collaboration. Since the first KIFI symposium was organized in 2004, NTNU has had the pleasure of hosting the symposium every three years. Advanced research and education from both countries have been the core of the symposium, mainly within the academic fields of energy, materials technology, and biotechnology. The collaboration has resulted in more than 100 joint publications and a very significant number of student and faculty exchanges from both sides. In fact, more than 250 students have been exchanged since the beginning of the millennium. NTNU now has more than 10 memoranda of understanding with universities in Japan. As a result of this close collaboration and a welcome outcome, the Emperor of Japan and his wife visited NTNU in 2005. They were very pleased with the visit. Actually, to the extent that the emperor wrote about Trondheim in the famous poem he writes and publishes in January every year. This shows that international collaboration is important, academically and culturally. And NTNU wants to continue the close and fruitful collaboration with Japan and with the University of Tokyo. University of Tokyo has been one of our most important partners in Japan from the beginning of the collaboration. And it, is, it was no coincidence that Professor Hideyuki Toshikawa, former rector of the University of Tokyo, was NTNU's first honorary doctor from Japan. I visited Japan and University of Tokyo myself two years ago. And when I met Vice President Naoto Tekimura, he expressed, among other things, a wish to enlarge the collaboration being, uh, between our two institutions to cover more disciplines like the humanities and the social sciences. I would very much like to see this happen. I did not meet Professor Turu Okabe during my visit, but I'm very pleased that you have accepted the honorary doctorate at NTNU. for the support of a long tradition of academic collaboration between our countries and universities. Let me ask Professor Gail Martin Hoiberg to step forward and share with us the motivation for bestowing the honorary doctor's degree upon Professor Toru Kabe. Gail Martin Hoiberg. Dear Ambassador, Dear Rector, Dear All. Dear Professor Wukabe, or I want to say dear Toru, Konnichiwa. I am honored and very happy to give a short speech on the occasion of the ceremony 
for receiving your honorary doctorate at NTNU. Toru Okabe is vice president and professor at the University of Tokyo. He is recognized as one of the world's leading researchers in the field, in his field, titanium production and everything about titanium. Resource recovery and materials process engineering and metallurgy. He is also known for the development of new sustainable processes for recycling of rare and noble metals from electronic waste, known as urban mining. Besides being an outstanding researcher, Okabe has a great capability of bringing together academic researchers and industry. For his excellent work, he has received a number of awards in Japan and internationally. I have known you for about 20 years. And we have become great friends and colleagues after having met so many times during this time. You are also much younger than most honorary doctors. So I hope that you can help to develop our collaboration on research and educational activities, guest lectures and student exchanges. You have taken care of many of my students and one of them, Evinson, spent six months in your group. We have enjoyed a large number of events together with you. International conferences, industry visits, two live workshops with drinking parties and second parties, Kabuki theater and downhill skiing. We have met in many places like China, MIT, Caltech, Qatar, Iceland, and Shimbashi, and we have enjoyed Unagi, Oden, Shirovine, Chochu, Aquavit, and Whale, Sashimi. All conferences, I would like to mention the Kifi Symposium 2018 on the boat enjoying the Northern Lights and the sixth Titanium Roundtable Conference in Iceland, also in 2018. You have been on the committee for one of my PhD candidates, and we will never forget your titanium entertainment show during the dinner. You have organized 15 workshops in the United States. They have been very successful, and many of my colleagues and students have participated and enjoyed the friendly atmosphere of the reactive metal workshops. We have a lot to learn from you when it comes to research and from your excellent collaboration with industry. It is always a pleasure to visit your office and lab where we can meet your students and colleagues. We would like to invite you to Trondheim when it becomes safe again, and we hope you can give guest lectures and inspire our students to make a difference when it comes to sustainable solutions for metal production and recycling. What we need now is vaccination so we can meet for real again and we can attend more second parties and continue to develop the democratic titanium process. Congratulations on your big day. Having heard the reasons for the award, let us move to Tokyo and ask Ambassador Niyamar and Professor Toru Kabe to step forward. Dr. Kabatoru, it is a great pleasure for me on behalf of Dr. Anneborg to present to you the diploma and the ring. As visible insignia of your honorary degree at the NTNU in Trondheim. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you, Ken. Professor Toru 
Okabe. Having received the diploma and the ring, I hereby declare you Dr. Honoris Causa of the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. I also confer to you the Jus Docendi, which grants you the right to lecture at our university. Our research community looks forward to welcome you to Trondheim and to hear your guest lecture when it again is possible to meet in person. We wish you every success. Good afternoon, Madam Ambassador. Good morning, Doctor and the people at NTNU. And hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Toru Okabe at University of Tokyo. Today, here in Tokyo, the cherry blossoms are in full bloom. However, unfortunately, we can't get together to celebrate the beautiful cherry blossom in full bloom. Although we are still struggling in this difficult time, I am grateful that we have managed to gather today at the Norway, Norwegian Embassy here in Tokyo. I'm truly honored and humbled to be the third Japanese researcher to be conferred with this honorary doctoral degree from NTNU. I want to convey my deepest thanks to all those who helped me to make this ceremony happen, especially to Ambassador Igna Nihamao and Councillor Otto Marmegren at the embassy and Rector Ambo, Pro-Rector Tor Grande, Dean Oibin, Why by Gregor Gersen and Professor Gail Martin Harbach at the NTNU. The COVID-19 pandemic has transformed our lives, making us realize the powerlessness of science and technology against formidable viruses. At the same time, through the telework and the remote lectures, we have become more aware of the importance of future potential of digital transformation. Many problems cannot be solved by technology alone. However, engineering is expected to play an, an increasingly important role in solving the problem of modern society, which have become ever more complicated and diversified. NTNU is one of the largest and the finest universities in Norway. And it is my pleasure to be associated with this institution. I'm constantly admiring the stride of the research work on sustainability and environmental studies at NTNU. And I look forward to increase the collaboration between the university in Norway and Japan. My research field, the urban mining, is concerned with the development of new and more sustainable methods for production and the recycling of variable metals from modern electronic devices or scraps. This will be an important subject of study in your country as well in the future. There is a lot left to be done in this field. Once the travel restrictions are lifted, I do hope to connect with professors, students, researchers from uni your university and to increase collaboration. Thank you once again for this proud batch of honor. I truly appreciate it. 
and I will strive to continue to contribute to society and serve this profession with commitment and passion. Thank you. Our ceremony in Tokyo and Trondheim has come to an end. It has been a ceremony in celebration of collaboration and of academic excellence. On behalf of NTNU, I once again would like to extend our gratitude to the Norwegian Ambassador for hosting the ceremony and the reception in Tokyo. Ending the ceremony here in Trondheim, you ho we hope you will enjoy our musical final from the online doctoral award ceremony at NTNU last uh, November. Norwegian dance by Edvard Grieg, performed by a string quartet from the Trondheim soloists. This was placed, uh, played in the last ceremony in November 2020.